You are listening to Announce, Season 6, Episode 34, Rejecting the Narrative, and Unveiling Buffoons. <laughs> this true story of a seriously surprised 1887 mayoral candidate in Argonia, Kansas, is highly unlikely, at least at the time. The candidate didn't even know their name was on the ballot until the day of the election. In 1887, the rules for elections did not require that the names of those on the ballot were made public until Election Day. The inclusion of this surprise candidate's name on the ballot was done as a prank, or a joke, if you will. Political rivals were trying to make the point that such a candidate was foolish. Once the intended hoax was made public, the candidate made it clear they would be honored to serve if elected. Is that egg on your face? In a remarkable turn, the Republican Party leadership hurriedly met with the improbable contender and fully placed their support behind the last minute mayoral nominee. Immediately, a notice was posted and it was made public that this was the Republican choice for mayor. Then the Women's Christian Temperance Union and prohibition parties abandoned their original candidates followed the Republican lead and threw in their full support for this improbable nominee. And with the wholehearted support of these political powerhouses, this perceived preposterous prospect, non-politician, was transformed into a potential possibility for a prominent public office. And as it happened, this no longer a joke of a candidate, their name placed on the ballot as a prank, this ploy was no longer a joke. And the pranksters became buffoons. And their plan backfired big time. The voters of Argonia resoundingly exercised their responsibilities as citizens at the ballot box. And on April 4th, 1887, they elected Susanna M. Salter, mayor, with greater than a two-thirds majority. <laughs> In today's politics, they call that a landslide and a mandate. Susanna M. Salter. Susanna M. Salter became the first woman elected mayor in the United States. And, by the way, she spent nothing on her campaign. She did not enjoy the support of the press, wealthy investors, lobbyists, or opinion makers. Seems folks chose not to give credence to the exaggerated arguments that women didn't have the temperament, talent, or brains to lead. Voters rejected the deceptive arguments, carefully crafted and subtly designed, and force-fed to the public by the aforementioned buffoons to keep them in power. And here's another shocking fact. She was elected mayor more than 30 years before the 19th Amendment was ratified, giving women the right to vote. I guess sometimes folks can see past the hyperbole and manipulation of those who, for their own benefit, wish to maintain the status quo. His mother and wife served admirably in her elected capacity, and though she chose not to seek re-election, it was said she served with great decorum. Observers noted she was an accomplished parliamentarian who kept meetings focused, who did not allow irrelevant blathering to sidetrack discussion and important town business. Unintended Consequences The point here is that while some of the political machine in town were trying to manipulate the people in order to gain power, Madam Mayor did an excellent job of serving her community. This attempt to humiliate and poke fun by those who opposed women's right to vote boomeranged in a big way. As the very political point, the pranksters were attempting to prove that women cannot be allowed to vote, that it was a ridiculous idea that women patently are unable to function in such a capacity or serve in public office, was instead exposed in an obvious and undeniable way to be, well, a joke, laughable. And the ambitions for power of Saul were clearly exposed, and they had become the joke. Nothing extraordinary happened in Argonia during Madam Mayor's tenure. However, the election of Susanna M. Salter garnered worldwide attention and further sparked the nationwide debate. Having seen that women could serve well, 
attitudes at large began to swing from resistance and objection to the right for women to vote and what was derisively called petticoat rule to a realistic acceptance that women voting and serving was not an issue. That when it comes to voting and running for political office, gender should be and is in any meaningful or practical manner, well, quite simply, not relevant. Sulphur gave birth to nine children, one of which was born during her tenure as mayor. And although she remained active in religious and political matters, she never again ran for public office. In March of 1961, Susanna M. Salter passed away at the age of 101. She set an example of humbly rejecting the ridiculous and irrational zeitgeist of the moment and the persuasive but foolish waves of popular culture. This was a woman who did not allow pointlessly preposterous notions of the moment to get in the way of what was reasonable, right, and good. There are several little nuggets or ounces of wisdom that might be found in this little vignette from history, but might I suggest we focus on just this one. Political maneuvering has the potential to pop the folks who perpetrate political pandering, prevaricating, and posturing right in the posterior. But more importantly, what one is capable of should never be predetermined by cultural attitudes that may be popular in the moment, but rather by, as Dr. King said, the content of their character. So, here's the ounce. Like Susanna M. Salter, do not be afraid to take advantage of the opportunities that come to you when you're ready and able. It may require a little courage, but you must make the best of them. Do good. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, if you found us worthy, please hit that like button. Uh, subscribe, share. We need your help in letting the algorithms in the interweb know we're worth watching. Thanks.